Oh hey, what's happening there YouTube? It's Brian House here for House Made and today this video is all about alignment and taking the time that it takes to get things right. Uh, this week in the workshop, uh, we've hired a new guy. His name is Brent. You remember him from a couple videos back. That's Bald Man Knife and Tool. He helped me design the True Tilt table. That was a huge success. And I figured, you know what? Let's just combine forces and see what we can't do together. Um, also, um, I would like to just really quickly say thank you to everyone who left me a comment on the last video. Very kind, open, honest, and very deliberate comments, well thought out. It was, uh, it renewed my, my energies, my faith in, in YouTube. And I'll tell you what, man, it just gave me goosebumps to read all of those. And I'm still kind of behind on responding to everybody, but I'll, I'll get to that. And I, man, I just truly appreciate a lot. I saw a lot of names down in the comments section that I hadn't seen before uh, or, or don't see that often. Um, and then I saw a lot of names in the comments that I do see a lot. And, you know, both of those actually make me feel great, really great. So um, thanks so much. And uh, I hope you get a lot of value out of my channel. That, that's really what I do this for you know, uh, putting my work out there to kind of show how I do my things and work and design. And then also, you know, my one of my great hopes is that we can bring manufacturing back to North America, you know, at least small scale manufacturing. We do some of it here, but I would really like to have uh, to inspire more people, maybe some younger generations than myself to know that it is possible and that there is money in it. You can make a living doing it. And, uh, you know, it's just an enjoyable enterprise. Anyhow, so this week I have uh, spent a ton of time designing a bracketing system. Now, last video you saw how I poured the refractory for those six ribbon burners. They uh, popped out of the mold just fine, even after I forgot how I forgot to spray the uh, mold release into that thing, but they did pop out okay. They were a little bit ugly. Um, and also one of the major problems I had was getting those burner bodies to sit flat and level in the refractory. Uh, how we came up with the solution for that was to create these sort of M-shaped brackets that sit on the mold. And then they have magnets that sort of hold the mold at a specific height. Um, those were easy enough to make, but it was harder to kind of tune them and calibrate them. And then the spacing, there's a little bit more, you know, tinkering around and figuring out how that spacing all worked and whatever else. But we did come up with a good solution. We have yet to really fully put it into play yet. Um, I was hoping to pour uh, the, the rest of these ribbon burners. Uh, I've got six more that are, are produced uh, right now. I was hoping to pour those uh, today, but I don't think we're going to get to it because I'm really just trying to refine the process. Those six prototype ribbon burners that we made last week, actually, I posted them to um, Facebook and Instagram and they sold within five minutes. So, you know, they're fully functional, ugly, but functional, as I like to say, kind of like myself. So, you know, uh, they'll go out into the world and people will use them, give me feedback and, um, you know, let me know how they work. And that's that's kind of how I do things around here. Now, this next round, this is round two. Uh, I imagine these actually being fairly close to my standard which will mean that they're they're uniform looking they're the same size all the way around the refractory is poured correctly i'll use mold release this time um so that they'll come out and not hopefully not break the corners off stuff like that also i printed a new 3d printed mold um i'm not quite finished with that yet but uh just made some small design improvements like i made little risers on the outside so i don't have to use a clamping system to keep the mold walls in place. And the final sort of big challenge of the week was that I designed a custom funnel that I'm 3D printing and that will allow for the uh, funnel to sit on top of the straws and the refractory when you pour it. The big challenge here is that when you're pouring refractory is that you gotta keep the refractory itself from getting down into the straws. That is uh, an enormous challenge, believe it or not, because um, you know, you're dealing with like a mortar type thing and it wants to get everywhere. So this funnel I designed kind of slides over the straws and then you can pour the refractory around it and it sort of evenly allows the refractory to fall down into the mold. Um, that uh, was an interesting process to design in Fusion and I learned a lot while doing it. The other half of the mold process was I really wasn't happy with how much waste we had with the straws. You know, we were putting straws down in the mold, cutting off the tops after the refractory had been poured, and then everything gets pulled apart, and then the straws go in the trash. Uh, those are plastic straws. 
and I would rather reuse them rather than them going to a landfill or a recycler. So the 3D printed mold that I just came up with, the floor actually has the holes all the way through. And what will happen is we'll pull the straws down through the bottom so they become reusable. Uh, so that is a, was an awesome challenge to kind of surmount. And, uh, you know, uh, I like the troubleshooting stuff. So this is like really up my alley, you know, the, like putting all this stuff together and having the ability to 3D print things has just changed my game. I mean, I'm able to dream something up, wake up in the morning, sit down at Fusion, and then put it all together and have it printing by that afternoon. And it usually takes a day or two to print. Um, and, you know, I've got this working prototype that I can at least, you know, decide whether or not it's usable or, you know, what change, what, what changes can we make and make it better. Um, the 3D printer I'm using is a longer LK5 Pro. And uh, the reason I chose that was because Longer, the company decided to sponsor me. I never had a 3D printer before. My son has one, but I never had one. When they sent it to me, it was kind of a sponsorship deal. Well, now I just bought one more, uh, and I think I'm gonna buy a third one so that I can run these regularly and keep up with production because we're doing a whole bunch of things here in the shop, and we're actually selling some stuff that's 3D printed uh, that's related to the Grinder project and also the Forge project. So. Anyway, I you know feel like uh, having that kind of technology is almost like alien technology. It's like Velcro and satellites and all this stuff I don't fully understand, but I've got that power in my hands and it's really cool to have that. Uh, I'll put a link down in the description so you can go find a longer LK5 Pro. They're good people to work with, solid product, and I have run this thing a lot. Hours and days and days and days, probably weeks of printing on these things and they just hold up. So. Uh, so upcoming this weekend, um, you're probably watching this on a, during the weekend or whatever, uh, I'm gonna be pouring the refractory for the next round of these six burners. And if this goes well, which I hope it will, I think it will, then we'll go into full production of the ribbon burners. The Apollo Forge project, which is the actual forge body with the insulation inside of it and everything else, that will be coming in the probably sometime late September. You're gonna see, you're gonna start seeing me cutting those parts out and fully assembling those so that um, you know we can get a working prototype and figure all that stuff out too. But anyway, guys, if you got something out of today's video, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you click that little bell, you get a notification every time I upload something to YouTube. There's many ways to support my channel. By far the best way is to go to my website, housemade.us, buy pieces, parts, and plans for the Revolution 2x72 Belt Grinder project. And all the other projects now that I've got rolling out, like the Apollo Forge plans will be coming out soon. Uh, and there's just a bunch of other cool little tools on there that might help you out. And as always, guys, I hope to see you on the next video. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the love and support. My name is Brian House, and this has been House Made.